G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. During the past two weeks, I've been irregularly uploading a four or five part instructional series on how to use GRGSM to decode 2G cellular downlinks. This has been in response to an inundation of questions via email in the comments section of my videos regarding how exactly GSM is decoded on a PC with software defined radio. In part three, we learned how exactly GSM data is captured and recorded with an SDR and stored to a file locally on a PC using the GRGSM capture utility. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how a GSM capture file with the extension .c file is decoded with the utility called GRGSM decode. And with the aid of Wireshark, view the decoded GSM data in a nice human readable format that we can view and analyze. We won't be needing any additional hardware for this tutorial, so please see part one of this video series for an in-depth look at the required hardware and software needed for GSM decoding. However, just like in part two, we will be needing one additional piece of software called Wireshark. If you're already using Dragon OS Focal X like I am, it is included, installed and ready to go out of the box. For those of who have been following along with this series will know that in part three, we recorded this file in our home directory called capture.c file. Contained in this capture file is a 20 second data recording of my simulated non-hopping GSM based transceiver station running on my Blade RF. I know most of you have heard this already, but for any new viewers to my channel and this video series, Australia has no public 2G networks anymore as we switched them all off between 2016 and 2018. So my only option for hobbyist GSM research is to simulate a base transceiver station using a full duplex transmit capable software defined radio. So with all that information out of the way, let's set up our decoding environment. If you haven't already, open up a terminal window and run the following command to launch Wireshark. So we'll just hit enter on that. Uh, once Wireshark is launched, you can either open up a second terminal or do what I've done and open up a second tab in the original terminal window. This is where we will run our GSM decode commands. So in part one of this GRGSM series, we learned how to scan for GSM cells around us with GRGSM scanner, which outputs the frequency the cell is operating on. In my case, my simulated 2G base station was operating on 1805.2 megahertz at the time when this capture file was recorded. So with that said, we have now reached the practical part of the tutorial. So I'll go ahead and send GRGSM decode the H argument, which is help. And we can see all of our configurable options. So the easiest way to get started with GRGSM decode is to type the following command into the terminal. But because we are super cool elite hackers, we will configure some more advanced options to send to the binary. I'm going to copy and paste this next command because it is fairly lengthy. So I'll need to explain this command in some detail. So first we write the name of the binary and then we write the M argument, which stands for mode. 
most certainly you will not need to configure bcch underscore sdcch4 because this mode is what is used in open bts and yate bts for rogue base stations i think it's rarely seen in the wild on real 2g base stations i think so if you're capturing from a real gsm network you will most get in you will most definitely be configuring it like so just straight bcch and we can see all the available modes up here in the help command. So I'll just go ahead and rewrite the command that's relevant to me. Uh, next, we have configured the T argument. And we have specified time slot zero. We recorded this capture file in part three with no voice sms or data traffic was being sent so for the purposes of, of this video i'll only be decoding the control channel we then configure the c argument to specify the path and the file name to the capture file because the c file is in my home directory we don't need to specify the path only the file name both the V and P arguments can be configured to see the GSM data flowing in the actual terminal window. I like to do this so I can see if GRGSM decode can read the capture file and it's doing its job correctly. V will display the decoded GSM data in hex format and P will display the raw GSM bursts in binary ones and zeros. The F argument is for frequency. That one is pretty straightforward and requires no explanation. The S argument is for sample rate. Like the F argument, this option has been universal across all our GRGSM tools we have used so far in this video series. And finally, dash dash PPM argument is for the frequency drift compensation. That has been universal across this video series also. So now we will go ahead and hit enter on that. And we'll begin to see binary and hex data flowing in our terminal window, which is a good sign as GRGSM decode is demodulating the GSM packets and it is forwarding this data to UDP port 4729 on our local loopback address of 127.0.0. .0. And as a result of this, you will see packets beginning to populate Wireshark, which is also another good sign. So essentially, this means that we have successfully replayed the GSM signal in exactly the same state as we received it with our software defined radio. I've witnessed a few people on GitHub and on the GRGSM Google groups asking how you open a C file with Wireshark? The obvious answer is you don't open it with Wireshark, but more so you replay the recording with GRGSM decode and view the data in Wireshark. So yeah, that's really, really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the fourth installment of my GSM decoding series. Stay tuned for part five, where I'll be demonstrating the usage of GRGSM channelize and explaining its role in dealing with wide band capture files of GSM cells that have frequency hopping enabled. However, I won't be able to make this video for another two or three weeks, unfortunately. So thanks very much for watching. Bye.